tells me, am I supposed to do the whole thing? Sure, tonight? go ahead, do it. do the whole thing. <laughs> he changed his mind. <laughs> so. <clears throat> yeah. Just like women. <laughs> Now when I was a boy, grandfather said, I sat often and listened to my grandfather telling stories about when he was a boy, just as you listen to me, Doming. He patted Doming's straight black hair. Remember they were sitting there talking, if you remember at the end of our story <clears throat> from last week, and grandpa was sharing some things with his little grandson. <clears throat> Have I ever told you that my grandfather was a Euromentado? What is a Euromentado, grandfather? Doming asked, although he had heard the story many times, the word Euromentado, my boy, means an oath, a promise, to kill as many as possible if those of those who do not believe in Muhammad. When a young man wanted to join a group of Euromentados, he had to get permission first from his parents. Then he bathed his body, cleaned his teeth, and had his nails cut and trimmed. After this, he had his eyebrows shaved so they looked like a moon two days old. He had his hair cut very short. Then he was fitted with a tight band around his waist. This was so he could stand on his feet longer and fight a bit longer, even though he might be terribly wounded and about to die. Domingue shivered in the growing darkness. And then, Grandfather was saying, the young man put on a white robe and a white turban around his head. He always wore a good luck charm hanging from his waist. This was to help him to win the fight, never mind whether he died or not. This was a holy war, my boy. The Euromentados tried to find the largest group of Christians they could. Then they ran, shouting, There is no God but Allah! A Euromentado did not mind being killed. He thought a dead Euromentado went to paradise riding a white horse. Each Christian he killed went with him to be his slave. I tell you, boy, when the Christians saw the Euromentados coming with their sharp knives, they cry. The Euromentados, and, and did they run, or try to run? Not many got away. Domingue looked closely into his grandfather's face. When he saw their what he saw there made him shiver, even though the night was warm. Grandfather was smiling, showing his teeth, red from the betel nut he was chewing, and the smile was not pleasant. Again, Domingue felt the fear in his heart. If I were to become a Christian, grandfather would surely kill me, he thought. Grandfather was saying, you see, boy, we Mohammedans believe there are seven steps to paradise and seven steps to hell. But a Euromentado climbed quickly the seven ascents to paradise because he killed so many Christians. Let's go inside and I'll show you my knives. <clears throat> Domingue did not want to see the knives tonight. They always made him dream. Why could not Grandfather show them and tell his stories in the daytime? On nights like this, when Grandfather talked and showed his knives, Domingue always felt as if ghosts were about. <laughs> this knife, Grandfather said, is a Chris. It has killed many Christians. Domingue looked again at the wide, wavy edges of the knife. Both sides were the same. Domingue noticed more. He saw the dried blood stain. This kind of knife made the worst wound of all, Grandfather warned. Be careful, it is still very sharp. Now this Chris, Grandfather continued, is like the other, except the edges are not wavy. They are straight. Here is a barong, such as, a, such as I wear in my belt. This is the sword of the Muhammadans, and this one is a beheading knife. Domingue ducked as Grandfather swung the knife in his direction. Scared, are you? He laughed, showing again ugly red teeth. Grandfather continued, When the Spaniards tried to conquer these islands, they were never able to conquer our people, the Muslims, living on faraway Mindanao, never, even though they fought us for nearly 400 years. Of course, this was long before I was born. Our people were not afraid to die. Some of the Muslims fought the Spaniards in Manila. The Spanish built high walls and thought they were safe, but the Euromentados climbed over those walls, even though the Spanish fired cannons at them. Of course, many Muslims died, but others got over the wall, and when a Euromentado got close to a man, that man had no chance against the knives of our men. Seeing the look on Domingue's face, Grandfather added, This was a holy war, I tell you, boy. Christians deserve to die, he sneered. <clears throat> Domingue wanted his grandfather to stop talking about the knives, 
Tell me about the little people who were first on the island, he begged. Oh, they were the Negrito. They were not as tall when they were full grown men as you are now, Doming. They had black skin and tight curly hair. They lived in trees. They used to put their mats toward the wind when they went to sleep. They were probably afraid the breeze might blow them out of the trees as they slept. The Negritos planted rice and corn and then moved on before it was grown. Of course, the next group to come that way ate what the first group planted. By that time, the first group was eating what others had planted. They were tree bark for clothing, but they, they wore tree bark for clothing, but they were never fighters as were the Muslims. The Muslims chased them back into the jungle. Just remember, boy, we are fighting for something, most of the time, that is. Sometimes we fought each other, just for fun. Well, there I have been talking again, just as if it were I who was a Uramentado instead of my grandfather. I've done my share of fighting and killing, though. But come now, it is way past time for you to be asleep. I know your mother wants you to get much sleep so you can trot off to school tomorrow like a good little boy. Block. Grandfather spat more betel juice out the door. <clears throat> Doming lay on his mat on the hard floor a long time that night as he watched lizards chasing mosquitoes. Could <laughs> there be ghosts in those shadows? Maybe the spirits of the Christians killed so long ago were here to get revenge. Maybe the old woman was right, saying something terrible would happen to one when three were in a picture. Yet somehow, in his heart, Domingue felt it was Rosa who was right. Rosa had said that God loves his children and takes care of them. But I am not his child until I accept Christ Jesus as my Savior. Domingue thought, finally, a very troubled boy fell asleep to dream troubled dreams. When morning came, Domingue had forgot all about the ghosts which he had imagined in the shadows the night before. He hurried out very early as usual, carrying his box of popsicles and ringing his little bell. Domingue stopped in front of a wood carver's house. There was Rosa's mother, who sat in the doorway, squatting on the floor, a long skirt spread around her. Holding a piece of wood with her bare feet, she carved lovely little objects which she would sell. Often Domingue paused here. If grandfather glanced down the dusty road, he would think Domingue was watching the wood carver. But while Domingue held his head slightly bent, as though watching his eyes look upward and inside the doorway, standing behind her mother was Rosa. She often held lovely pictures in her hand as she told Bible lessons. She quoted scripture verses which Domingue would then repeat to himself all day. In this way, he learned about God and his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet as much as he wanted to do so, Domingue was afraid to accept the Lord Jesus as Savior for fear of his grandfather. Domingue dared linger only a few moments. Like most Filipino boys and girls, Domingue learned quickly and remembered well. This morning, as he rang his little bell, he kept repeating the verses he had been learning. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 14, 27. Neither let it be afraid, neither let it be afraid. Neither let it be afraid. Domingue kept repeating, but his heart was afraid, terribly afraid of his grandfather. The other verse he had heard the day before, as he stood outside the little church, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. What does it mean? Domingue wondered. The Filipino pastor had said it meant that no one could go to heaven unless he accepted Jesus as his Savior, believing he was a son of God and that his death on the cross was a punishment for our mm -hmm. sin. If this is true, thought Domingue, Grandfather will never get to paradise, no matter how many Christians he helped to kill. And Mother will not go to heaven. Neither will I. A troubled boy went off to school that morning, head down, kicking the dust with his bare feet. It was while Domingue was in school that he heard, instead of the usual caribou and horses, the sound of a motor coming up the road. He glanced out and recognized the automobile which belonged to the missionaries from Manila, the very missionaries in whose home Domingue's sisters were. And sure enough, his sisters were in the car. They were waving excitedly as they passed the school, hoping Domingue might see them. Domingue was certain that the missionaries from Manila would go to the home of the missionaries in his village, and his sisters would be with his mother. He quietly asked his teacher if he could go home. She raised her eyebrows, meaning yes. Domingue did his best to walk slowly out of the school, trying to keep the excitement from showing in his face. 
But just as soon as he was outside, his feet ran quickly over the road on which he had walked slowly and sadly only a few hours earlier. Domingue's mother was excited to see her daughters. Grandfather, too, was pleased, but he demanded immediately, Those Christians haven't made Christians out of you, have they? Touching grandfather's arm lightly, Domingue's mother pleaded, Please do not spoil a happy day. We have so little time. You go and gather the herbs we need for your favorite meal. Grandfather loved the mixture which Domingue's mother made on special occasions. It was an altogether meal of herbs, camote, which is sweet potato, and fish heads. <laughs> Domingue scrambled up the ladder steps just after Grandfather had gone to gather the herbs. He was in time to hear one sister say, Mother, we are Christians. The God of the Christians is the only true God, and Christ Jesus is his son. He died for our sins and rose again. If it were not true, Mother, do you think these missionaries would leave their homes and loved ones to live here where everything is strange to them? The other sister added, Mother, we are glad to be able to come home to see you, but the main reason for our coming is this. We want you, Mother and Domingue, to become Christians. We are praying for Grandfather, too. God can do wonderful things, and we want you all to be in heaven with us someday.